Hi, Mahmoud from Hopsworks here, and today we're going to talk about deploying a Hopsworks cluster on manage.hopsworks.ai using Terraform. First, if we head to the manage.hopsworks.ai, I think the first step that uh, as a customer or user you, you, should have to, you should do is to sign up to the hopsworks.ai. Once you are signed up, the second stage that you have to do is actually connecting um, hopsworks.ai to your cloud account. And um, here I'm going to show you quickly how does these things work. So basically what we have in the, if you go to the under settings, cloud accounts, you will see that you have AWS, Azure, or GCB. If we click on uh, AWS, in this case because I have already configured it, I'm going to show you um, the steps basically that you, you will see when you connect the first time. Basically you have to first um, create the cross account rule, which means that you will allow uh, hopsworks.ai to, to do uh, different operations on your behalf on your uh, in your cross uh, in your cloud account. Why we do it this way? Because Hopsworks AI is basically a control plane that just manage your cluster on your behalf on your on your cloud account, while all your data and everything will still be on your cloud account, and Hopsworks AI actually will not have access to it. So if we check the steps here, the first one actually you will just create the role, and it's as you see here you need to configure it with the specific uh, external ID, which is your ID in this case. And you will have to do this by just uh, simply running this AWS command. And the next step, you will have to create the inline uh, policy, which has the permissions that Topsworks AI require. And once you do that, finally, you will get the role that you use, and then you just uh, paste it into the, into the text here, and this will finish the setup. Okay. Once you are done with this part, you will be able to create clusters in Hopsworks AI using your cross-account role. And the way it works is that you can do that from the UI simply by clicking Create Cluster, and then you can click and Deploy AWS, and then basically you will just have to follow to go through the different stages of the of these form by supplying all the different informations that you need for your cluster during the setup. Uh, so this is the easy way to do that, but for some customers or some cluster, uh, users, basically they want to manage their infrastructure using uh, configuration files. And one of the most popular uh, tools in this, uh, uh, in this domain is actually Terraform. Hopsworks.ai, we provide uh, a Terraform provider that you can use to create your own uh, cluster and configure it, everything within a configuration file um, using Terraform. The first step that you want to, in order to use Terraform, is actually you need to head here to the settings also again, and then under the API key, you need to generate an API key that will be used by, your, by Terraform to create the cluster on your behalf. And I have already created the, an API key, so I will not create a new one, but basically, the, or we can actually create a new one. We can just delete this old one and generate a new API key. Then we copy it. And what we do now, I have here, I already prepared a project that has some uh, uh, cluster configuration that we're going to use. But let's do the first step by exporting this um, API key as an environment variable. It is recommended to do it this way and not put it directly onto the configuration files because you will do it, you, you will put the configuration files, for example, in a version control or something. Um, so now we can just uh, go through the different uh, configurations here and we'll understand how it works. So we have three different files as we see. We have these versions that basically just put the requirements for the Terraform provider that you're using. And in here we are using AWS provider and the Hopsworks AI provider. And then the variables, I have only two variables, which is the region I'm using and the AWS profile I'm using. Then on the main, we have the first thing that we have to do is actually configure the AWS provider and the Hopsworks AI provider. We don't need actually to provide any configuration here, only just the region and the profile if we need. But as I said, I'm using only the default profile. The first, the second step here, which is the step one I'm, I'm, I'm creating, all the resources required by Hopsworks AI in order to, to create your cluster. In practice, you don't need to use this helper. This is just a helper method that we use in order to create clusters easily, like for testing. But in most cases, you will have these resources already created, and you will just configure it for Hopsworks, and then you just supply the names directly in the configurations. So in this module, basically, we create three resources. We create the SSH key. Uh, Essentially, actually, you don't need the SSH key. In some cases, you're just, you can just enable the SSM. 
The second one, the S3 bucket, which is required by HopSource cluster, which we store all the data in the S3, buc in the S3 bucket in your uh, uh, account. And the third one is the instance profile, which is required by HopSworks because uh, the different uh, instances that we create in your cluster and your account, basically they will need to access different resources, which is mainly the uh, S3 bucket in your account as well. So we need to configure this instance profile. So you can have your own instance profile created before, and you can basically, as, as long as it has the correct permissions that we require, it is fine to use it directly here. So this module basically, as I said, just create these resources. Then the second step here, um, because if we, as we have seen in the UI, there is different parts that you want to define what are the instance type for different uh, resources of Hopsworks. So for example, for the head node, we need to know how big the VM should be. So um, as in the Terraform provider, we provide a data source, which is a read-only resource, and it can give you some information about like uh, which instance type that you can use for different uh, node types. For in this example, I want to uh, get the, the instance type the head, uh, for the head node on AWS on this region, and this will determine me the smallest uh, instance type that I can use. And similarly, we can do for the different for RunDB data node and also for the uh, worker nodes. Uh, the nice thing about this data resource that we can actually configure it with different uh, minimum uh, configuration because as I said, it will retain the smallest. So I can do, the, for example, I can do minimum CPUs that I wanted to have only at, uh, at least eight CPUs. And similarly, for example, for memory, at least like 16 gigabyte or something. Uh, then once we have these resources, that's the main part here, which is we create the Hopsworks, uh, the Hopsworks cluster, and this is um, the cluster that we create, that we want to create. Um, essentially, we have the different attributes that we need to configure uh, here. So one of the first uh, attributes, you just configure the name of the cluster, the SSH key, which was already create, we already created before in the first step, so we just point to the name. And then the head node, uh, we point to the instance type that we already got from the data source. And similarly for the workers, and then for the AWS attributes, we uh, point to the region, the instance profile, and the bucket name. The, there, is, uh, there is other uh, attributes that we can configure, but I'm not going into details of all the other attributes. At the end of the video, I will show the documentation for, for the attributes that you can use later. But like, for example, one of the most known one, uh, most important one, is if, for example, if you have your already created your um, network, VBC network, and you want to use it, then you can just configure it directly in here and put the VBC ID, security group ID, and the subnet ID. Then the second part here is actually the RunDB. So in this setup, I'm just using the simple setup, which is I'm, set, I'm setting up only a single node. And in this setup, I'm using this uh, RunDB data node type, as I chosen before. And lastly, in this configuration, I'm setting the open ports. Uh, I'm opening the SSH uh, port. Uh, then now what I have to do on the, my command line after I, the first step is actually to run Terraform init. And this will initialize the providers locally on your project, as well as uh, the, install the modules, which is the one that I'm using for testing. The second step is running Terraform plan. And this one will show you all the different resources that will be created uh, using uh, Terraform. You can go through these resources and make sure that it's correct. Then the last one will run Terraform apply. And this one basically will just apply all the configurations that we have uh, done. And basically, it will create all the resources in the cloud. As you see here, it creates all the different resources in AWS, as well as starting creating the cluster. And then if we head back to the UI, we can see that the cluster now is being created. And eventually, once it is created, you can see that you can access the cluster UI. The nice thing also here about the control plane, that's once you have the cluster up in here, you can start uh, looking through the different parts, like for uh, open ports and stuff like that from the UI, as well as from the Terraform side. Also, we can also take in uh, backups. Also, we have upgrades and stuff like that. And then we have member um, like management, um, management control uh, for the users, basically. Here I have my own organization, and then you can add members and stuff and so on. These we can touch upon in different videos, uh, but uh, this is it for this video. The one thing that I want to show last is actually the documentation for the Terraform provider. It's under the regist. If you go to the registry of the Terraform uh, to the IO and search for Hopsworks, you will see the Hopsworks provider uh, documentation. 
and there you can see the documentation of all the different attributes as well as we have a link here for all the different examples or more advanced examples that you can use uh, for your cluster. Um, that's it for today. Thanks.